window, and bacteria operate a kind of promiscuous, it's not, so, it's not really sex because they don't exchange half their genes the way we larger creatures do, um, but it's a sort of promiscuous free-for-all cut and paste or copy and paste. It's like, it really is like co copying a bit of text from one document and pasting it into another document. And there's a, there's a profligate copy and paste world in bacteria. They get genetic tricks from each other. Genetic tricks get copied and pasted from one bacterium to another, so much so that you can't really use the normal criterion for defining species in bacteria at all. Bacteria that are very, very different from each other, which would, under no normal circumstances, mm. be called members of the same species, can receive or donate genetic information to each other. And um, this is one of the ways in which, for example, antibiotic resistance gets, gets passed around. So at the within the bacteria, which is a very large slice of life, I mean, it's a, you know, very, bacteria are enormously important. Horizontal gene transfer becomes important. It becomes mm. ubiquitous. And so it's possible to say from that that if you um, take seriously the fact that bacteria are so numerous, uh, that means that um, horizontal gene transfer can't be ignored. There are a few cases where horizontal gene transfer has been alleged between larger eukaryotic, things like animals, uh, organisms. I'm not sure how authentic they are. Just about three minutes, four minutes left. Uh, just a thought that uh, I think it's four or five percent of our genetic code is actually to make us, Richard and me, uh, separately. And about 30% is barcodes of bacteria and various other viruses that have come and gone. 30%? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Please. Yes. Hi. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how important you think it is that currently practicing scientists are able to and perhaps make the effort to explain their science to a wider public and perhaps given the increasing specialization of science and the difficulties that that presents? I think it's very important. Thank you for raising it. I think it's extremely important that scientists should uh, attempt to explain what they do. And when they do, they're often very good at it. Uh, and um, so people, scientists shouldn't be diffident about that. Um, it is very important, if only for economic reasons. I mean, the, the, the money for most science comes from the taxpayer. And so it's important that people should understand where their money is going so that they, they're happy about, about science being properly properly funded. But the other thing, of course, it is just fascinating. And so, um, it, it mean, doing the sort of thing that, that Robin does is just very, very important for cultural, aesthetic reasons, never mind for useful reasons. Thank you. I hope you don't think I'm putting you on the spot, but I have a question about your tactics as a sort of campaigner for reason and science and so on. How do you defend yourself when you're criticized that your sort of tendency to be bombastic and I'm going to say offensive. Um, <laughs> strident. Assert. When you're accused that that is more divisive, when that does more to turn, say, religious people off rather than yes. getting them to your cause. Um, well, I don't think I really do sound very bombastic or strident or offensive. Um, I do think that there is something about religion that, make, that when religious people hear, even quiet, calm, reasoned criticism. In New College, Oxford. It, it sounds strident to them. Um, there's, a, there's a lovely quote from Douglas Adams, which I can't render from memory, but it's, I think it's in The God Delusion, where he, he makes the point that um, in any other walk of life, you can have an, an argument. You can argue, as he says, about Macintosh versus Windows and, and, and um, this football team versus that football team and um, conservatives versus, versus Labour or Liberal. Um, and you, you have a respectable argument and you may get a bit heated about it, but people don't take offence. But if you say something really mild about religion, like, for example, there's a bus campaign going on in America at the moment, which says, the poster on a bus says, 
you can be good without God.